This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at hm.com. Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at hm.com. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. Not only have I been the owner of Mint Mobile for the last few years, I've also been a customer. I don't know if you knew this, but anyone can get the same premium wireless for $15 a month plan that I've been enjoying. It's not just for celebrities, so do like I did and have one of your assistant's assistants switch you to Mint Mobile today. I'm told it's super easy to do at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. Not only have I been the owner of Mint Mobile for the last few years, I've also been a customer. I don't know if you knew this, but anyone can get the same premium wireless for $15 a month plan that I've been enjoying. It's not just for celebrities, so do like I did and have one of your assistant's assistants switch you to Mint Mobile today. I'm told it's super easy to do at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at H&M.com. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at H&M.com. Who is ready for summer? Yeah, me either. Well, so I thought until I discovered Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hear me out. Before we head into today's episode, I'm so excited to share some details with you from today's sponsor, Dr. Stephen Cabral, a board certified doctor of naturopathy and author of The Rain Barrel Effect, whom I've had on the show in the past. He has a really incredible offer for listeners today that will help you hit the whole body reset button and get guaranteed results or your money back. Yes, if you have to ask, I've totally tried it. Here are the benefits of this 21-day detox. It decreases bloating and puffiness. I know I need it. I know we all need it. You lose weight and speed up the metabolism, rebalance your hormones, reset healthy inflammation levels, get clearer skin, enjoy healthy body sugar levels, increased energy, improved sleep, strengthen digestion, 
Who's ready? If that's you, this detox has been proven to work for tens of thousands of people. As limit time offer, Dr. Stephen Cabral is providing $100 off a 21-day detox or $20 off a 7-day detox. Head over to stephencabral.com forward slash Veronica to reserve your detox today. Hey girl, imagine a life where you feel supported, connected, and understood. I get it. Being a mom is hard, especially when you're spinning so many plates. We exhaust ourselves trying to create the perfect life for our family. You deserve to enjoy your family without the stress perfectionism brings. On this podcast, I provide practical and relatable life experiences. I teach women quick and easy to use strategies to help them reclaim their identity, reignite their marriage, and enjoy their children. If you're ready to be challenged, then pull up a chair, grab a pen and paper, because it's about to go down. I'm Veronica Cisneros, a licensed marriage and family therapist, and this is the Empowered and Unapologetic Podcast. Hey ladies, welcome to the Empowered and Unapologetic Podcast. I'm your host, Veronica Cisneros. Today's guest, oh my God, I'm already going to cry. Today's guest is one of my biggest, 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 biggest heroes. Um, And I have learned so much. We are going to have a very raw, very real, very vulnerable conversation. We have not rehearsed at all. Matter of fact, she has no clue what I'm going to ask her, and we have no idea where this conversation is going to go, but with Mother's Day here, I want to make sure we have an intimate conversation, and more importantly, I feel like there's so many things that go unsaid, and so I want to personally introduce you to my mother. Mom, hey. Hey. So this is totally like your first time recording a podcast episode, like ever. Ever. I don't do this stuff. (laughs) I mean, I'm wearing my shirt that says goat. (laughs) So we had a little bit of technical difficulties, both on my end and on her end. And we figured it out. My mom is on Zoom and recording her first episode. So where I want this episode to go is I want to ask the one question. This is the only thing I literally prepared was what did I learn from my mom? And so, you know, I struggled with this question because it was like, okay, I need to get something easier because this is just too damn hard. And I don't think I'm going to be able to keep it together if I hit record and say what I, what the true answer is. And, you know, like right now I'm thinking about it. What have I learned from my mom? Holy shit. I've learned so much from you. Like, I think there was definitely a time where there was a great amount of resistance, like a whole great amount of resistance where it was like, I don't, oh God, I hate to admit this, but like in so many ways, I wanted to position you as the enemy. Like I wanted to, why didn't you have the answers? You know, why, you know, there were times, I mean, I remember as a kid, mom, why didn't you leave dad? You know, and mom, why, why didn't you put yourself first? Why did you put us first? There was all of these questions I had, and I so desperately wanted you to be able to answer them. And there was a great amount of frustration because it was like I was putting all of this weight on you. And it was easier for me to put all of this weight on you versus putting it all on me. And, you know, I think about like all of the life lessons, all of the things that you've taught me. And, you have truly taught me how to be empowered and unapologetic, like in so many ways. You know, I think back to like, there were times we didn't have money and you figured shit out. Like, okay, well, I'm going to go to 7-Eleven. I'm going to buy a bunch of goddamn candies. I'm going to make it work. And we're going to sell it in front of the house. And it's like, that took so much initiative. That took so much like, you know, like just thinking outside of the box. Yeah, I know when kids get out, I know they want snacks. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and have it right here. 7-Eleven's way far from our house. 
So instead it's going to be convenient. And it was like, holy shit. My mom was like, had that entrepreneur mindset. She developed ways of making things happen, you know? And then I think about other things like with regards to how the hell were we in modeling? How in the hell were we, right? Like, I mean, shit, think about us. We were living in the neighborhood and we were in freaking like auditions. We were, you know, um, you guys, I don't think I've ever shared this with you guys, but yeah, my sister and I, we were in a international commercial and we got paid a good amount of money. But how the hell did my mom figure out how to go ahead and hire an agent. We didn't have no goddamn money, but my mom, we had we had an agent and we had a really good agent, Tracy Goldman, right? Yep. Like, how did she do all of these things? And I think about, okay, what other things has she taught me? Shit, well, she taught me how to go ahead and like not take no for an answer, figure the shit out. Like, okay, if this person says no, all right, keep going. And so I want to ask you, like, how... How did you do that? How did you know to do that? And why didn't you just give up? Well, I just, at that time, we didn't have internet. So it was radio. I would hear the programs on the radio and I would think, hey, I could look for an agent. So I started looking in the yellow pages for top agents. And I thought, hey, why not? Saw kids doing baton. And I thought, "Mm, this is the start. We'll do this. So you guys started in baton, then modeling, and then um, through also the Sunday newspaper, I saw an ad for Samuel. God, I think it's Samuel Wilson. He's an agent in San Diego, and I contacted him, and then from there, just got pictures and sent him out to agencies. But it was just footwork right there just looking at the yellow pages and figuring it out I mean nobody taught me that I didn't know anybody that had done commercials and so that was a good distraction for you guys so you wouldn't see what was happening in the household um and so yeah that's how I did it that is so so, that is so and Ma I never knew that like this is the first time you've ever shared that with me I never I never knew you went through the yellow pages to go ahead and find us an agent well, I mean, even, I mean, back then we didn't have GPS. It was Thomas Guide. So that's <laughs> beepers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just calling people, um, setting up appointments. And through the um, pageants, beauty pageants, that photographer, um, she would take pictures for me on credit. Hmm. And I would send them out. And that's how you guys ended up with um, Tracy Gold and which is Gold Marshak mm-hmm. and top agent in um, Burbank. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Top agent. And right away, I mean, you guys went up there and uh, interviewed. But that's why, I mean, I sold candies, like you said, Sundays, whatever, made dresses, everything. I that's didn't know right. how to sew, but I did it. That's right. What do you think, like, where do you think you learned that from? Like that figuring out mindset like I'm I'm gonna figure this shit out you know I learned it from mom because mom my mom always figures things out so grandma did it and so what what do you remember witnessing with grandma well I think um when because she was divorced she had to figure things out with us three it was three of us and um she did everything she could to get a place for us to live in because we were living with my grandma yeah, uh, and I would just see her move forward, whether it was cleaning houses or whatever. Yeah, she just did it. So I think that's what I would see. It's my grandma did the same thing, though. Yeah, you know, um, they they always looked for a way to make ends meet or just make it. It's so interesting because there have been so many times. I know for me personally, I'm and you you definitely helped me through it. You know, when Willie and I were on the verge of divorce and I wasn't working, you know, I, I just had Leah and it was like, okay, how the hell am I going to do this? Like for real, how am I going to figure this out? And it was like, okay, well, I remember you saying, you know, I'll take care of her, go back to school, go, you know, go to work, do whatever the hell you need to do. And it was like, all right, you know, figured it out, got a job in Oceanside, even though I was living in national city, 
drove, you know, would drive to your house. You were living in Escondido, National City to Escondido, then to Oceanside, and then do that whole loop. And I remember it was hell, Mm -hmm. but it was, for me, it was like, this isn't going to be my legacy. Like, this isn't going to be what, like, this isn't going to be what kills me. It's not, and not like kill me, kill me, but just like, this isn't going to defeat me. And that's literally what I had going on in my head. Like I have a kid now I have to, I have to figure this shit out. Not only for myself, I have to figure this out for her, for you with us three girls. And you're literally, you were literally doing it on your own a good amount of time. And again, no disrespect to dad. I absolutely love dad. I adore dad. And I mean, you know, my sister's interpretation might be different. Ernie's interpretation might be different. But the truth of the matter is for me being the oldest and watching this happen. Yeah, you did this shit on your own. Mm-hmm. What was, what would you say if you had to pinpoint it to one thing? What would you say was your driving force? You guys, I wanted to make sure you guys made it. I didn't want you guys to go through what I went through or my mother went through. Or, I mean, not, I can't say much about my grandma because I thought she did well, but. I just didn't want the cycle to repeat itself. Yeah. I wanted guys to keep going. Um, and I knew that there was a big opportunity for all of you guys. I always believed in you guys. So, so that's why I focused on every, all my life on you guys. So, so with that, you focusing it and drawing it all to us. What mm-hmm. part was for you, mom? I didn't. I didn't have time to think about me. Um, geez. All I could think about was you guys just getting you to the top. You know, I didn't know what, where it was going to go. I just knew it was what I had to do. And as long as I did that, everything was going to be okay. Where did you get that from? Like, as long as I do that, as long as I just totally solely focus on my kids, everything's going to be okay. Like, where did that come from? Well, I, I didn't have that as a, a growing up because my mother was, you know, busy working, doing her thing, but hers was for her to build her future, not to build our future. And that was survival skills. For yeah, me. of course. Yeah, I'm not trying to knock her down on that. No, no, no. Yeah. But, I wanted to break that. To me, it was more of a, hey, you know, my mom didn't have time for us, but I want to make the best of what I've got with my kids. So I, they're my world, you know, so that's why I just focused everything on you guys. I, I To me, I thought, well, when they grow up, I'll have time for me. Yeah. But right now... I need to to keep moving forward for my kids. It's for them. Yeah. My, in so many ways, and like, I, I see this now, now that, you know, now that I, I'm, I work with people, but like in so many ways, it was this constant compromise over and over and over again. Like, the kids have to be fine. And I never, and you know, I obviously I, you know, have a relationship with grandma and everything. And I've asked her, you know, crazy questions, but like, I appreciate the way you just said it growing up, my mom, you know, and it was no, it's no disrespect or a hit on grandma at all, but like, it makes sense. Like totally survival, you know, growing up for grandma, it was like, well, you have to do for you. You have to do for you. Cause nobody, nobody's there. Nobody's going to help you. And your kids will benefit as long as you do for you. But I think I, I think where it went was it wasn't necessarily do for you. It sounds like in like a healthy way. It sounds like do for you in unhealthy relationships. Do for you regardless of what it might cost you. So it's one extreme. Like do for you even though it's going to cost you your identity mm-hmm. for grandma. Mm-hmm. And then on your end, and then, you know, um, it's not that kids go second, but it was like, the kids will just reap the benefits somehow, as long as I do for me in this Mm -hmm. compromising manner. 
And then it sounds like for you, and this, this is what happens with, with most, most of us parents, you know, we take whatever we learned from our parents and then we try to do the exact opposite. Right. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you did the same thing, right? It sounds like you went to, okay, well, my mom did for her and compromised herself. So I'm going to do for my kids and compromise myself. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Both extremes. What would you say kind of now looking back, what would you say you would do different as a mom? You know, I'm not sure. I really don't know. I mean, all I wanted was, I just focused on you guys. I, I didn't have time to do anything else. And going back, it's, I don't think I would have done it any different, especially in the life I was living. Yeah. I think in so many ways, it was also too like survival, ma. I, that's what I was just going to say that that was my survival. As long as I don't look at what's going on, I'm, we're okay. Yeah. We're okay. We just have to keep on going, keep on going. We can't stop because the moment we turn back, we go back and I don't want to go back. Yeah. What is up with my body? How did I gain 20 pounds? And it feels like it's impossible to lose. There's no way I can try another dieting fad. Like, absolutely not. Ladies, are you struggling to lose weight and keep it off? Are you tired of trying fad diets and juice cleanses only to be disappointed by the outcome? The only way to finally lose weight and get well is by removing the underlying root cause holding you back. Your liver filters all of the blood in your body every six minutes. But with the influx of toxins in our environment, our livers cannot keep up and our bodies have no choice but to store these toxins away in our fat cells, organs, and even our brain so they are not floating around in our bloodstream. Over time, this toxic buildup begins to cause symptoms of poor health and eventually can lead to all types of diseases in the body. The Dr. Cabral Detox is a comprehensive, full-body, functional medicine detoxification system that gently removes harmful toxins while rebalancing the body at an underlying root cause level. If you are ready to take it to the next level, ladies, what I want you to do is I want you to go to stephencabral.com forward slash Veronica. Again, that's stephencabral.com forward slash Veronica so that you can either get $100 off for your 21-day detox or $20 off for your seven day detox. Yeah. You know, I, I think about like, you know, obviously me as a mom and, you know, with Aaliyah, shit, you know, Aaliyah's 19. And when she was moving out, I struggled with that. Oh my God. I struggled with that. Cause I immediately thought the first thing that came to mind was all the things I had taught her. And I like, I stayed there you know, with like, well, shit, she's still rocking out to Miley Cyrus. (laughs) (laughs) My poor Aaliyah has no street smarts, (laughs) you know? And I thought like, well, damn, I didn't teach her how to become independent. I didn't like, and I started to think about like all of the things that I didn't teach her. And Um, I was working out and she was, um, upstairs packing. Um, we had already packed, but she was just kind of like, you know, I went through everything and separated it. And she was just going through the final, final, um, pile of the things that either she wanted to toss or donate. And so I'm downstairs working out and I'm like freaking crying like a little baby. And I just started to think of like, shit. And I, I, I found myself making a list of all the things that I didn't teach her. And it was like, okay, stop, stop. What have you taught her? What type of relationship do you have with her right now? And I wish I could say that I was totally able to answer that question right then and there. And everything was fine. And I went upstairs and went to bed and I was good to go. But that's a lie. I really didn't have the answer to that question until (laughs) until Aaliyah's like, Mom, I think I need to make a doctor appointment because... I mean, I don't have COVID because the school tests us, but like I've had this cough for some time now. Remember when she had that cough? She had the cough for like Mm -hmm. two months. I've had this cough for like some time now. 
And I know you've told me that I need to go to the doctor, but can you like help me make a doctor's appointment? <laughs> <laughs> and it and it was then that it was like, ah, regardless of how much we want to teach our kids, regardless about all of the things we want to do for our kids, the one thing I think we all need to make sure we give ourselves grace for is Although we might not be able to teach them everything, what we have done is provided them with a safe space to go ahead and call us when they have questions about life. Yeah. And I, you know, when I was on, and that dawned on me when she was asking me to make an appointment, help her make an appointment. And what do I do, mom? They're on the phone, mom. What do I do? <laughs> okay, mom, just talk, just talk. I'm going to stay quiet. It's like, no, Leah, <laughs> no, yeah. but mom, but mom, they're saying I'm 18 and I can't go to my pediatrician. <laughs> <laughs> mom, I've been with Dr. Pumphrey all my life, mom. He says he can't see me, you know? And I thought about like, so I'm on the phone with her and I'm cracking up and crying at the same time. And then I think of like how I'm like 43 years old and how often do I call you and say, okay, mom, so is this meat still good? <laughs> It's been in the fridge for this long, Ma. Is this still good? Or, you know, I have Willie, you know, there's a crack or something, some noise going on in the house. And Willie's like swearing up and down. He has it and he could fix it. And then I'm like, okay, Mom, so this is what's going on. And you're like, oh, yeah, just go ahead and unplug it. You're fine. Oh, this is the thing that it was. Remember when when my um, my stovetop was ticking? Yes. And I yes. was like, mom, I think there's like a freaking bomb in my house, mom. And you're like, remember? And you're like, wait a minute, what is it? And I was like, well, it's the stove, mom. Okay, Veronica, what happened? Well, I dropped a bunch of water. Oh, okay. Go ahead and unplug it. But mom, it's ticking. It's ticking. Am I going to blow up? Yeah. Mija, just go ahead and unplug it. And then Willie's over there. I think he, <laughs> I think he had like acetone. Pobrecito, I love him. I think I he had know. like acetone with Q-tips, and he's over there with it. And you're like, no, you just got water in the burners. You're gonna be fine. And the crazy part is, and I think I'm okay sharing this, but he totally called his dad too. <laughs> <laughs> He did. He did Remember? call his dad. He totally you were just happy because I got it right. I was I was like, Psh, my mom's smarter than your dad. Like, <laughs> but yeah, I think so. Like, all in all, like, we're never going to teach our kids all of the things and we're never going to do it right. And I think like, I guess I should ask like for you with, we're not going to get it right all the time yeah. for you. What would you say was the hardest thing about that? I'm probably not going to get this right. I didn't get a lot of things right. I feel um, like, were there, was there ever a time where you felt like I failed as a mom? Yeah, I did. I feel like I was just too strict and my craziness, you know, going through, like I said, what, what I went through with your father yeah, and the way I acted, I, I thought, Oh my gosh, I hope my kids make it. Even though I'm trying to teach them something right. I'm my behavior. And so that was a big concern. So I think that till a couple of years ago, cause I, I remember telling you, Veronica, I'm just trying to make it right. I feel like I failed you guys. And I'm trying to make up for that. Um, Like you said, we teach you guys what we can. But, yeah, so that's what I'd like to change is the way I would lose my temper or, you know, just um, to stop and think before I spoke. You know, I can totally relate. Oh, my God, I can totally relate. Um, Willie and I had a conversation about like, you know, our parents and our upbringing and we were talking about like how each, you know, he felt, 
his sister had it easier. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh my God, dude, I could totally relate. I feel like my brother had it easier, mm-hmm. you know? And then I thought about it and I thought about it when I was in session and it just dawned on me like, wait a minute. How has Brooklyn had it easier than Aaliyah? And I started thinking about my parenting and it, it, it goes back to how often I would be so frustrated and so overwhelmed and just so tired. I was mm-hmm. so freaking, I remember being so tired. And the mom I was to Aaliyah is not the mom I am to Brooklyn at, mm-hmm. at that at their age, let's say at, at 11, right? And I think about, well, what the hell was different? You know, there are so many times where I've always, you know, I've I've said to you like, oh my God, Ernie's your, your Ernie's your favorite. Ernie's your baby, you know, and then dad's, you know, Rosalie's dad's favorite, even though I'm the better kid. I'm going to tell you right now, you guys, I don't give a shit if Rosalie's listening or Ernie's listening. I'm the better kid. I'm the better kid. Anyways, <laughs> I digress. I was a perfect kid. Well, kind of perfect. Close to perfect. But yeah, I and, and I think about it, like, you know, even with the girls and it's like, what was I dealing with during those times of parenting? And this is where I think Grace needs to come in. With Aaliyah, Willie was deployed. He was gone. He was in training. It was early on in his career. I was very young, very naive, and very, very emotional. I didn't know how to deal with my emotions. I remember I would be frustrated, and I didn't know how to deal with that frustration. But what that frustration really was is I was sad. I wanted my husband back and it sucks so badly that, you know, he's deployed in Iraq and I have Aaliyah. I remember there were times when I was in my undergrad and I was trying to like juggle all of these things. And I was so mad because Aaliyah didn't realize all of the things that I had on my plate, but how the hell could she realize she was five? How how could she understand that? She couldn't, but it was because I wasn't aware of all the emotions that were coming up for me and I didn't know how to deal with them. This is obviously way before I became a therapist, but, and then I think, but that's what was true for me. So I was easily triggered, easily frustrated. And then I look at when I was a mom, you know, the same age for Aubrey, Aubrey was still, or Willie was still in the Marine Corps. And there was still, again, this feeling of I'm all alone in this. I'm Mm -hmm. all alone in this. I don't feel supported. I have to figure everything out for the house. I have to figure out the kids' school. I have to figure out me working. And me and Willie were not financially okay back then. You know, I I have to figure all this out. By then we had just come back from New York and we had come back with so much debt. So, so Mm -hmm. much debt. And, you know, I had had to go back to work. I had to do all these things. And it was like, I remember... my intent was not to take it out on the kids. However, that's exactly what happened. And then now I think about Brooklyn. Brooklyn went through one deployment and she was very small. She was a baby. She, she, was just, she had just been born. But the latter of her years have all been like with me being a therapist, you know, and me like working on myself and doing all of those things. And so, you know, I, I, I talk about like, it's important for us to be able to give ourselves grace because it's not our intent to be a bad mom. It's not our intent to not be there for our kids and give them the love that they need. And they, they so greatly deserve, but it really gave me a different perspective with how I viewed you. You know, and it was like, well, shit, it's not that I'm not her favorite. It's, it has nothing to do with that. It's that mom was struggling and mom was doing the best she could with what she had. But I couldn't see past that. I just turned 18 when I had to, but, or no, actually you weren't, I was 19, but I was just, I turned 18 and I was married. Oh my God, my, you're young. Aaliyah's 19. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I have a kid and I'm going through 
a lot of issues with your father, with, you know, not knowing what's going to happen to him and me. And it's just a roller coaster. Yeah. Oh, ups and downs. So it's hard to be a mother at such a young age. I mean, by the time I'm 20, but three, I've got three children. Shit, mom. You know? And so trying to do, you know, and then, I mean, I think by when... I was 23, your dad was 25, he got burned, you know, with tar. And so just dealing with all those things, Veronica, it was just, you don't know. You don't know. know. And I didn't have help. I didn't have my mother to help me. You know, she would tell me, go figure it out. I mean, isn't that what you wanted? So it's like, (laughs) okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I didn't have that support. That's why I focused on being different. My kids call me. I'm there. Yeah. What do I do? And I'm okay. I'll be there in about half an hour, but you know, I'll race to your house. Yeah. So that's different. I mean, I try to be different, but yeah. I mean, when you're young, you don't know. Yeah. You're trying to do everything you can, but you're still a kid almost, you know? I mean, yeah, you are a kid. And teen to an adult and and figuring it out by, on your own, mm-hmm. you don't have anybody. No. You know? I didn't have my mother or my father no. to help me out. So it's like you just keep quiet and try to make the best that you can with what you've got. You're literally making it up as you go. Like you literally are. making it up as you go with yes. the best intentions. But sometimes it's not received that way. And I think no. that's a hard part. Like. Yeah, you know, I like I said, I think back of like the times when it was like, oh, I wish my mom would have done this and I wish she would have done this and I wish she would have done this. And it's like, well, how could she? Mm-hmm. How could she? And how unfair is it for me to go out and position you with all of these expectations and all of these demands without truly looking at the whole picture? How could you? You were young yourself. You were a kid. You no, were- no, no, no. Yeah, no, of course absolutely and when we're young yeah we we're so stuck in this everything about this sucks Mm -hmm. you know but I also didn't want to be trapped by that either Mm -hmm. you know and right now with Mother's Day coming up I think it's very very important that we all take a look at that because we do we get we get so blinded by the emotion and it interferes with our ability to truly see our parents for who they are you know and shit, my, you went through a whole hell of a lot, a whole lot. And you didn't go down without a fight, like at all. One of my greatest memories, (laughs) you're going to get so mad that I'm bringing this up. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I'm ready for you. So I think of the question that pops up for me is, when do you know your mom had your back? When do you know your mother? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, not that time. Oh. <laughs> Don't get us arrested, mom. Don't get out too much information. Remember, the world is listening. That's right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I think about when do I remember my mom had my bag? And as I asked this question, my mom started braiding her hair. <laughs> <laughs> you could take the get, what is it? What is it called? You could take the homie out the hood, but you can't take the hood out the homeboy. <laughs> no, nope, you can't. So I think about that one time, I think I was with Miss Weisingle, my, my kindergarten teacher. Remember we're walking to school and there was a bumblebee that was after me. Yes. And you kicked the bumblebee's ass. Oh my, my mom. <laughs> A bumblebee. Remember? I literally fought that big bumblebee. I you mean, it was this fu- big. <laughs> <laughs> Ma, I was on the ground. I know you were. I like literally, I remember we were right at the gate. I remember we walked over there to school. Mm-hmm. There was a bumblebee and you, 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 I think you took off your jacket or something and you hit well, it. Well, I had to because I, I hit it. <laughs> And when I hit it, it came back at me. I could see its fangs. I could see everything. And I'm like, oh, heck no. This shit ain't going to happen. Yep. 
So I ended up taking my sweater and it was going, I mean, it was, a, we were throwing down. You were throwing, mom, I yeah. wish I had a phone. That would have been like, that would have gone viral. That would have totally gone viral. No. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> it, you know what? And the thing is I had my keys in my pocket. Yes. So when I took off my, my um, jacket, sweater, I don't know. Yep. And I hit it, boy, that was it. That was it. Was it. Gone. So and my I mom dusted myself off and okay, let's go. <laughs> my mom was literally on the ground. Yes. Hitting the air, trying to get this bumblebee to protect me. Yes. But, and I, and I think about like that moment and my mom obviously a hundred percent had my back. And then I think about every other moment after that. And it, you know, it makes me think of a picture and I'm going to try to give as much detail as possible, but it's a picture of a kid as a goalie and the soccer game is playing, right? There's a soccer game going on, but the mom is right there behind the goalie with an umbrella for her kid putting, putting shade. Yeah. And I'm, I'm do you remember that? And I immediately thought of you and it's like, how many times have I fallen on my ass? And my mom has been there like in so many ways, you know, whether it was healthy, unhealthy, like there was, there, well, there was still, there was still that same, that same commonality, like mm-hmm. healthy, unhealthy. It was still with the goal of I'm here for you. Like, regardless of whatever the hell's going on, I'm here for you. And even if I don't know how to freaking get my emotions together, I'm probably going to be pissed off because I know you're hurt and I'm frustrated that you're hurt. And I'm okay. it's going to come out in anger, yeah. but I'm here for you. As we wrap up, I wanted to ask, so what quality would you say that I adopted from you? I think that you're a go-getter, but you also do a lot for your family, your kids. You're always there. You're present. Hmm. That's what I think. You know, is that... Why do you think you cry, Ma? No, don't cry. (laughs) No, I mean, I, I, I see that. So when I see you with your family, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's where it was supposed to be. Yeah. Oh, you made me cry. Those are the things I think as kids, we don't ask our parents. And I think it's so important for us to like have these conversations. Obviously, you don't have to record a podcast episode to do it. But like, I think these conversations are so important for us to have. And you and I have had like really good conversations, obviously off, you know, off this platform, you know, where we talk and we're both crying, you know, and we talk about like just the good, the bad, the ugly. You know, mm-hmm. and it's, it feels so good that you see that in me. Now, as a mom, what advice, and I want you to be 100% honest, what advice would you give me to do better? To do better? I mean, I think you do well already. The way your parenting skills are amazing. I don't see where you could improve at all. I mean, I think you're doing it right. Mm-hmm. You know, you, um, whatever you learned from me, you kept on going, like I said. So I don't think you're doing anything wrong. Because mm-hmm. I spend time with you guys. And when I see your family, it's like, oh, my God, how beautiful. I wish my kids would have had this peace. You know? So you're doing a good job. I think in so, like... When you mention that, I think about like, obviously that was something, you know, we all wanted, Ro, you know, Ern and I, we all wanted. And I know that that was your mission. Mm -hmm. Like being able to kind of take those blinders off. I know without a shadow of a doubt, like that was a hundred percent your mission is to provide mm-hmm. us with peace, mm-hmm. peace, in, uh, finding peace in the distraction, finding peace in the commercials, finding peace in baton and pageants and modeling. I mean, 
the shit my mom had us in so many things. Like, how the hell was I Miss Stars of Tomorrow? How the hell was, uh, you know, Rosalie, who won all these pageants, you know? And how the hell was it with the environment that we grew up in and with, you know, the lack of, you know, resources that we had? You're still out there doing baton with us. You know, like all of a sudden you are teaching us baton. You never got me. You never freaking taught. You never took a damn class of baton. And there you are teaching us baton. There you are, you know, out at night. You know, when I was in pageant, when Ro and I were in pageantry, you know, making sure that our coach was set straight, making right? sure he didn't mess with us. Made you. <laughs> But there was always, there was always that common denominator. Mom has your back. Um, I don't know why I'm going to bring this up real quick, but like even being in fifth grade and a teacher, a teacher went, remember Ms. Termath? I'm calling yeah. you out Ms. Termath because, uh, -uh. Yeah. yes. Um, mom went to school and my mom, mom. <laughs> 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 but it was like, it was there. What advice, so right now, as we're kind of, we're wrapping up and we're unveiling all of these things, mm -hmm. we put, as kids, we put so much, so much expectations, you know, on our parents because they should have the answers. They're the ones that should have it all together. What advice would you give the woman listening that's struggling with that exact issue? My mom should have all the answers. My mom should know better. My mom's against me. My mom's not for me. My mom's constantly judging me. My mom's constantly ridiculing me. I'm not her favorite. What would you say to them? I mean, for, not to be hard on yourself. I mean, we're doing the best we can with what we've got. Yeah. That we've learned. So not to be hard on ourselves. Yeah. Because it's... I mean, we'll always be wanting to be perfect, but that doesn't exist. I know yeah. I wanted to be perfect, and that didn't exist. So just love your kids and do the best that you can, but don't don't put yourself out there where you feel you're going to fail. Just keep going. Yeah. So I guess I was asking also, like, what would you give to the daughter – who, who feels like, I guess, I don't want to say mom, her, her mom failed her, but there may be some, some bit of like animosity towards my mom didn't have the answers and she should have. What would you say to her? I'm trying to think, cause I think the same thing about my mom. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's kind of hard. Cause I always think, shoot, why was my mom so hard on me? Why, 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 um, why did my other sisters have it easier? But now I think, damn, I'm glad she did that because I yeah. wouldn't be where I'm at if she wouldn't have done that. And that was her way of making sure I was going to be okay. Yeah. I mean, if we look at it, it was also her way of dealing, like the only with way her. she knew how to deal with what she was experiencing. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. We're all going through some struggle nobody knows about. Yes. Oh, I love that you just said that. Yeah. That just came to me. No, I love I love that you just said that. That was so powerful. That teaches us not to personalize it. Yeah. It's not yours. It's your mom's and your mom's struggling. And it's, mm -hmm. she's struggling through something that she probably is trying to save you from. Yeah. I love exactly. that. I love that. Well, Mom, do you have any questions at all for me or any last bits of advice? No. <laughs> Just keep doing what you're doing. I mean, you know, we're going to be good. We're going to be bad, but it's fine. We're just doing the best we can. Mm -hmm. That's it. What would you like your legacy to be, Mom? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. Just being there for everybody, for everybody to know how much I love them and say, hey, you know what? My grandma had me or my mom had my back. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Definitely doing that, mom. 
And you know I'm going to call your ass later on tomorrow. <laughs> Finding out if, if meat's still good or still or bad. Right? <laughs> if I should go on the the uh, uh, fast track or just stay where I'm at. <laughs> Mom, you survived your first podcast. Thank you so much for being on. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. <laughs> yeah, it was. All right, ladies, wishing you guys all a happy Mother's Day. Bye for now. Many women lose their own identity in the shadow of being a mom and a wife. We are a community of women who support each other. We leave perfectionism behind to become empowered and unapologetic. I want to personally invite you to join our girl gang. It's a free Facebook community for women just like you. Go to www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash empowered and unapologetic. See you there. What's up, ladies? Just want to let you guys know that your ratings and reviews for this podcast are greatly appreciated. If you love this podcast, please go to iTunes right now, write a review, rate the episode, and subscribe. Don't forget to share it with your friends. Hey there, this is Casey McGuire Davidson, host of the Hello Someday podcast. I'm an ex-red wine girl turned life coach who helps busy women change their relationship with alcohol. I spent 20 years climbing the corporate ladder while drinking a bottle of wine a night to unwind. In the Hello Someday podcast, my goal is to teach you the tried and true secrets of creating and living a life you don't want to escape from. Each week, I'll bring you tools, lessons, and conversations to help you drink less and live more. I'll teach you how to navigate our drinking obsessed culture without a buzz and how to turn the decision to stop drinking from your worst case scenario to the best decision of your life. You can find new episodes of the Hello Someday podcast every Thursday, wherever you listen. And I hope you check it out. Hey there. This is Casey McGuire Davidson, host of the Hello Someday podcast. I'm an ex-red wine girl turned life coach who helps busy women change their relationship with alcohol. I spent 20 years climbing the corporate ladder while drinking a bottle of wine a night to unwind. In the Hello Someday podcast, my goal is to teach you the tried and true secrets of creating and living a life you don't want to escape from. Each week, I'll bring you tools, lessons, and conversations to help you drink less and live more. I'll teach you how to navigate our drinking obsessed culture without a buzz and how to turn the decision to stop drinking from your worst case scenario to the best decision of your life. You can find new episodes of the Hello Someday podcast every Thursday, wherever you listen. And I hope you check it out. It's easy to blame ourselves for our struggles with alcohol. We see people around us being able to control their drinking without any consequences, yet no matter what we try, we can't seem to figure it out for ourselves. My name is Jillian Teets, and I am the host of the Sober Powered Podcast, where I use my biochemistry background to explain the latest research in addiction and help you understand both why you drink the way you do and how to develop the skills and mindset you need to find freedom from alcohol. I discuss topics like why we think about our drinking 24-7, why we have no off switch, and why we crave alcohol. If you're struggling with your drinking or you know someone who is, then I hope that you will check out the Sober Powered Podcast. New episodes every Friday. See you there. I know. I know we've been taught that motherhood requires alcohol. I know we've been taught not to question our relationship with alcohol until we've lost everything. And I know we've been taught that if we do dare to examine our relationship with alcohol, we need to head straight to AA and declare ourselves an alcoholic who is powerless to alcohol forever. But what if all that isn't true? That's definitely not my story. I'm Suzanne, the host of the Sober Mom Life podcast. I'm an influencer who stopped drinking in January 2020, and since then, I've been telling the truth about motherhood, influencing, alcohol, and sobriety. 
If you suspect deep down that glass or three of wine at night might just be making motherhood harder, well, you're right. Come and join me as I chat with other sober and sober curious moms. Let's laugh, cry, and normalize sobriety together, all while we reheat our coffee for the fourth time today. Addiction impacts all of us. Addiction's consequences run through all of us. From ourselves to our loved ones and through our communities, addiction creates so much loss and grief. My name is Dwayne Osterlin, and I'm the host of the Addicted Mind podcast, a show featuring personal stories, expert guests, and vital information about addiction and addiction recovery. We'll talk with leading treatment providers to discuss the latest research and treatment options for this devastating disease and advocate for mental health awareness. We discuss topics like the importance of creating a community of support to helping loved ones to some of the latest research on psychedelic medicines. The Addicted Mind podcast has been about creating hope, listening to stories of many amazing people that have overcome addiction and are thriving. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, subscribe to the Addicted Mind podcast wherever you get your podcasts or check out theaddictedmind.com. New episodes every Monday. See you there. Oh, hey, it's Erin. And I'm Michaela, and we're the hosts of the Two Sober Girls podcast, and we are on a mission to spill the wild truth about sobriety. Forget the rosé all day cliche. Sobriety is flipping amazing. Absolutely. It's not just about quitting the drink. It's a gift you give yourself and your loved ones. So what are you waiting for? Break up with that old toxic relationship with alcohol and let us show you the possibilities. And here's the thing. Everything your precious heart desires becomes way easier without the influence of alcohol. We're not just two sober girls. We're also wellness coaches. We're here to show you how to optimize health, lifestyle, and beauty, feel sexy and alive as F. So stay tuned because we're rolling out new episodes every Monday, wherever you get your podcasts and trust us. They have your name written all over them. We can't wait to share the magic of sobriety and wellness with you. Subscribe to Two Sober Girls Podcast today and come follow us on Instagram for behind the scenes action and send us a DM. We can't wait to meet you.